Hey everybody, I'm Emma Panuski and welcome to Art Lessons. Today we're going to be painting this textured wreath inspired by Vincent van Gogh. During our lesson, we're going to learn about a ton of different ways to introduce some texture into your paintings with a variety of household objects. We've curated this really great kit for you to follow along with all of our Apple Barrel art lessons. The kit includes 23 colors of two ounce Apple Barrel acrylic paint, one two ounce bottle of Mod Podge mat, and a 10 piece artist variety brush set. To follow along with our lesson, you're gonna wanna have with you our downloadable patterns for our lesson today, which you can find on platonline.com slash let's paint, a 12 by 12 stretched canvas, either bubble wrap, cling wrap, or plastic cups, some water. Today, from our 10-piece Artist Variety brush set, we're gonna be using our three-quarter inch flat brush, our number eight flat brush, and our one liner brush. You're also gonna to wanna to have either a piece of corrugated cardboard or a plastic fork. The colors from our Apple Barrel Art Lessons kit that you're gonna to wanna to have with you are white, tropic orange, yellow flame, spring green, new shamrock, pink parfait, diva pink, and black. Before we get started with today's lesson, I wanna teach you guys a little bit about texture. The reason that we chose Vincent Van Gogh for our inspired artist for today's lesson was because he was a master of texture. In the art world, there's really two main different types of texture. That's actual texture and implied texture. In our downloadable guide, we have a lot of really great resources to learn even more about texture. But the main thing that I want you guys to know after this lesson are those two differences between implied texture and actual texture. When we talk about actual texture in a painting, that is really the texture that you can feel when you rub your hand across a piece of art. Maybe the material is a little bit rough or bumpy, and that's because sometimes artists uh, layer paint or they use different types of mixed media to really create physical texture that you can feel on the painting. As opposed to implied texture, which is where we manipulate line, shape, form, and color to get a really textured appearance in a painting or a work of art. So let's start painting. The first thing that we're gonna do is add some pink parfait onto our palette. With our three quarter inch flat brush, we're gonna base coat our entire canvas with our pink parfait. We've base coated our canvas with pink parfait. We're gonna set it aside to let it dry. So there are lots of different ways to create a variety of different textures using some of the things that you probably have around your own house. On our left, I created this really cool texture using only bubble wrap and apple barrel paint. I'm gonna show you guys how to create this texture in just a little bit. In the middle here, what we did was we painted our pink parfait down once that was dry, we painted a really loose coat of our Diva Pink. We got some cling wrap and treated it as a sponge, kind of removing some of that excess Diva Pink. And then we got this really cool kind of crinkled texture. And then finally, we used the top of a plastic cup as a stamp. All we did was applied some of our Diva Pink to our palette paper. We dipped the top of our cup in it, and then we created a pattern to create an interesting texture as a background for a painting. So now that we've talked about the different types of background textures, let's go ahead and add one to our canvas. You're gonna need a piece of bubble wrap the same size as your 12 by 12 stretched canvas. We're gonna lay it down with the bubbles facing up. Add some Diva Pink to your palette. Using our three quarter inch flat brush, we're gonna go ahead and base coat our bubble wrap. Now 
While your bubble wrap is still damp, we're gonna set it aside, get our pink parfait canvas back out, and carefully, we are going to place that painted bubble wrap right on top of our canvas, bubble wrap side down. Go ahead and just use your hands to smooth it out, making sure that all of those bubbles are touching the surface of your canvas. Once you remove your bubble wrap, go ahead and let it dry. Next, we're gonna use our pencil to sketch out a circle to form the basic shape of our wreath. To do this, you can either freehand it, that's what I'm gonna to do today, or you could trace a mixing bowl or whatever kind of round household object that you have. Now we're gonna do some color mixing. We're gonna to add to our palette new shamrock and black. Using our number eight flat brush, we are going to mix about a four to one ratio of new shamrock to black. We wanna darken our black, but when we add black to any color, it really wants to make it super, super dark. So we're not gonna to add too much black, just a touch. Still using that number eight flat brush, we're gonna to start to draw some leaves to form the base of our wreath. Following the sketched out circle that we drew, we are going to follow that circle and make little comma strokes just like this. Comma there and then mirror it, comma on the other side. And then go ahead and fill it in. So we're gonna have some leaves following the circle that we sketched out, and then we're gonna have some leaves that are kind of a little bit looser, a little bit off the beaten trail, not following our circle as much. We're gonna paint these leaves pretty sporadically because we're gonna add a lot of different hues of green to this wreath. Go ahead and continue to paint some of the leaves into your wreath, but now we're gonna be using some spring green.
Lastly, we're going to paint our final color of leaf using new shamrock. Now we're going to go ahead and paint in the spines of our leaves. To do this, we are going to be using our one liner brush. But first we have to mix one more color. We're going to be mixing some spring green and yellow flame. For this, we're looking for about a one to one ratio. For our darkest leaf, go ahead and dip your number one liner brush into your black. We are going to intersect the body of the leaf. And our wreath, as you can see, the leaves are kind of moving clockwise. So we're going to follow that pattern with our uh, spines as well. So from where we intersected our leaf, we are going to pull out until we reach the tip or the edge of our leaf. Just working around those other leaves in our wreath. To fill in the spines of our new shamrock colored leaves, we're going to use that dark green that we created, mixing our sh new shamrock and our black together.
For our spring green leaves, we're gonna be using that really pretty light green color that we mixed with our spring green and our yellow flame. Taking our number one liner, we're going to go ahead and paint some little sprigs going in the same clockwise direction that we painted our leaves in. And I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. So painting really simple lines, they don't have to be straight. Starting from our wreath and going outwards. And from that main line, we can create little branches that come apart from it.
Now we're going to use a lot of different household objects as tools in our painting. So for this first step, you can either take your paintbrush or your pencil. We're going to use these to create perfect little circles that are going to act as our berries on our white sprigs that we painted. So there's two ways to do it. You can either dip the end of your brush into your paint to create these little berries, or you can take your pencil eraser, dip it in your paint to create these berries. These are gonna act kind of like stamps for us, and they're gonna create a perfect little circle, which is what we want. So for our berries, we're gonna be using Tropic Orange and Yellow Flame. Now we're going to create some abstract green sprigs coming from our wreath. To do this, you're either going to want to have a plastic fork or a sheet of corrugated cardboard. Today I'm going to be using some corrugated cardboard, but I'm going to talk you through how to do the same exact technique with a plastic fork. So first up, we're going to go ahead and trace three leaf shapes onto our cardboard piece. The same style of leaf that we painted on our wreath. little pointed ovals, just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Once you have your leaf shapes cut out, we are gonna go ahead and remove the first layer of the cardboard. And then you should end up with something that looks like this. Okay, now we're gonna treat our little corrugated cardboard pieces like stamps. So taking our three quarter inch flat brush, we're gonna go ahead and paint on the textured side of our cardboard. The colors that we wanna use for this section are totally up to you. So you can use spring green, new shamrock, that beautiful dark green that we mixed together or that really pretty light green that we mixed together. Now we're going to go ahead and press our stamp down to our canvas and then just lift it up. And in between each stamp, I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little bit more paint so that it's nice and wet.
You can also achieve the same effect by using a plastic fork as your stamp. Let's try it. Just rock your fork back and forth to make sure it's totally touching the surface of your canvas. And that's how you paint a textured wreath. In our lesson today, we went over a bunch of different ways to create a variety of textures using objects that you can find at home. For more Apple Barrel art lessons, you can go to platonline.com slash let's paint. Thanks for watching, you guys.